Hi, it's Brendan Chaplin here from Strength and Conditioning Education. I'm here with James Chisholm. I'm putting him through his paces. 19 minutes and 50, 51, 52, 53, 4, 5, nearly there, mate. 6, 7, 8, 9, and 20 minutes. He's on a 20 minute plank. Every professional rugby union player needs, must be able to do a 20 minute plank. How was that, mate? Yeah, it was good. It's pretty easy. He's done 10 seconds. <laughs> He's done 10 seconds. It should be easy. I was easy. still shaking as well. <laughs> so here we are. James is a professional rugby union player for Harlequins, and we're going to go through some of the core and trunk stability training that James is currently doing. Give us a bit of an insight into why we're doing this, first of all. Well, basically, my well, for a lot of us as well, our movement, my, especially me, my movement pattern isn't isn't great. The way I'm sort of built and move, especially around my trunk and, and pelvis. So um, it's good to just keep just keep on top of it, literally four or five times a week. Yeah. Hit hit core, glutes, lower back, um, lower back stuff. The small muscles, the bigger muscles, just just to keep keep on top of. Um, the movement stuff basically and try and get away from overloading my lower back which has been been an issue for a while yes now. yeah and you've got a, an oblique strain currently is that right which yeah. side is it left left so you've been doing work to help you with that as well so planks and side planks yeah absolutely just trying to avoid anything that that's really painful on it but i can still get a lot a lot of work in so it's just you know give and take see what yeah. i can get away with but still trying to get some good work in and interestingly enough, we, it's really easy to dismiss planks and that type of stuff as it is boring and you know whatever you think about that. But you're doing it, and, and it does help you, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It, that, that's the thing. It's, it's something you always say. End of the gym session, I'll do it yeah. with, along with your stretching, and you just can it. It's pretty boring, and some of them are quite hard. But I think, it, especially for us guys, it's really important to do um, and just to keep keep doing pretty much every day. And, and it's, it's that keeping on top of it that's key, isn't it? It's just that, it's almost body conditioning as yeah. much as anything, just staying on top of that so you've still got that capacity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna go through a couple of the other trunk and stiffness exercises that you do. Should we start with the back extensions? Absolutely, first. yeah. Let's ditch this mat. So we're gonna go through a couple of things that are in your program, again, sort of body conditioning really important and the first one we're going to use is Swiss ball back extensions. Yeah I mean in, it, in the gym it's usually chucked in my program we'll do it on the, the 45 degree back extension or the, um, the ham raise. Yeah, glute yeah, ham, yeah. Well, yeah that's yeah. the one but um, in the physio room and my Pilates and stuff just laying over the ball and just trying to do the same sort of movements getting up to there coming up and down but quite a big ball but yeah so try, if you can give us, a, give us a set of five or six on that yeah. then with the movement in there. So we're getting the flexion and extension and then thinking about your glutes in there yeah, as well. Yeah, I'm just trying to switch on my glutes yeah. and yeah. my core the whole time, just so the movement, depending on what I'm trying to get out of it, if I'm going from the hips on this ball, I'm going through my sort of mid, mid back, so I don't want yeah. my lower back to move so much. Yeah. I'm trying to get work in and around, well, just above my lower back really. Yeah. And just build it up either the extensions or just holding and getting in there trying to control the, the various movements that I've been doing. I, I do like the ones with the you know the extension and bringing the arms into it. And yeah and we can wait band it. work in there as well. Wait it if need be. Yeah yeah. I think people the, 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 the challenge people have is getting the hips into this the glutes into it. It's very easy to fry your lower back and feel like you've had a good workout but that's kind of not the point as much as absolutely that's where stability here isn't it for me i can rarely do any of this stuff without getting a little bit of my lower back because that's just how yeah I've, it's well, gonna happen it's how yeah. i train myself and it's how i built but it's trying to switch everything on my glutes and my core as best as possible in every single movement that's based around around this kind of stuff yeah every single time and try and keep if i need to keep that still it has to be still if you need to use in our we do pilates and in the, one of the physio rooms you've got the um the mirror and it's easy to do it then but it's just trying to be consistent with it all it's that awareness isn't it of what you're doing and and if we're doing squats and deadlifts and explosive work and sprints you, your mind isn't focused on that type of stuff whereas when you take that back strip it back and go back to the pilates physio or even 
S&C environment, you've got that time to think about muscles working in the right way, haven't you? Yeah, 100%, yeah. So move on then, should we go to the dead bugs? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a, a classic, I suppose, but again, one of those exercises that, that gets, it kind of gets, it, it gets used a lot, but it's more for like a burn than it is for actually the purpose of, you know, what, what we're going yeah, to show I'm not, here. Yeah, I'm not too sure why we're doing it, but <laughs> well, we'll get I've into been that told, why, just again, like we've said, trying to keep my back flat, switch my core on telling me not to get in there and use my lower back, switch everything on, make it as flat as possible. Yeah. And just control it. I don't, because it's an area I'm not very strong, I'm not shaking already. Yeah, yeah. It's just keep keep the reps low and try and yeah. keep the, um, the actual exercise as good as possible. Yeah. Well, what the, the key thing here is that you're using your anterior core. So what the dead bug is really good at is allowing you again to focus on that. And when people get tired on this, their lower back starts to kick in. So they start to sort of tilt the pelvis and lose that strength. What we want to do is bring the pelvis back in and keep it tight like a real stiff cylinder. Have a rest there, mate. Yeah. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, 100%. And when they say when, because it's the, the lot we spoke about before, the balance of doing it, if when I tire, they say, go a little bit higher so we can get more yeah. reps and keep Up working at a low, yeah. low level, because obviously the higher you go, the easier yeah. it is. They're just saying, let's get, if we want to get a real endurance in, go a bit higher, get loads of reps in, but keep the, keep the actual exercise good. So I've had athletes and, and clients here when within five seconds of that, they'll be really feeling it in their lower back. Yeah. Straight away. Yeah. It's like, be similar wow, to me if I didn't yeah. think, think So about you have it. to start off higher with that side of things, but it, it's the, it's the setup. If I, if I show, if I do it sort of standing up, we want to tilt the pelvis this way. So we want to go from like a, a really anteriorly tilted pelvis where there's lots of pressure coming through your lower back to bringing that through, squeezing your glutes and tightening up your abdominals and doing it from that angle. So the control is in this part of your body rather than this part of your body where you just, you see, it feels like you're sort of hanging on with the threads and the fibers in your lower back there. Whereas here you feel a lot more in control and then if you take that on into rugby and, you, and you're trying to smash into someone and break through, you need to be braced and tight here, not here like this. If you get smashed that position, you're finished. If we're tight here and we're moving through, you feel like you can break through a brick wall, don't you? Yeah, 100%. And it's that entry level training and awareness of, of that, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's slow. It's so slow and it's such small things that you need, to, as we were saying, every day, Try and, and it's not going to happen after a couple of weeks. No. It's lit for me. It's literally been well three year project. Yeah. I'm still. And it probably will be in your program for the yeah, next for, decade. Yeah. For the whole yeah. Yeah. For the whole career and even when I'm finished, I'm probably going to need to do yeah. bits to yeah. just keep my back, keep my back healthy really. Yeah. So the last one we've got is the good old fashioned pull off press. So do you want to which end do you want? Do you want that end? You can do yeah. So this one is normally you'd use a, a squat rack or a cable machine and you can just move it around, but it's just as good if you're working in partners like this. So I'll move to the side yeah, here. Yeah, I'm just getting there. Yeah. yeah. So you've got, you got a nice wide squat stance, head up, chest up, and then we're gonna, I'm just gonna give them a little bit of external resistance on the side here. Yeah, and this is the same again. Again, it's in, lots of it's in our gym program, especially with the problems I've had with my oblique, just yeah. doing it you know, every other day, every day yeah. in the physio room as well, trying to push the load and just you use it to, sorry, a controlled exercise. Yeah. Just, you take your time, don't you, and just yeah. do it properly. And it's a nice progression from the, the dead bug in that now you're on your feet yeah. and you've got to work in a bit more of a realistic environment. How's that feeling? Yeah, it's good. Just change sides? Yeah, can do. I'll, I'll like come that. with that. Is that all right? Yeah. And as coach, I can be tough here, I can really pull, I can go at different angles and add different stresses in up and down as well. And that creates a bit more of a dynamic environment. Another one, another progression I like with this one is, just stop there, right? Put your feet together now, actually touching like that. Now, now we'll do it. Just a little subtle change like that. You know, you gotta work a little harder there, aren't you? 
And another nice one is when you get to the extended position there, just take it over your head now. And I'll keep the extension on and you just got to work on that. It's a little bit easier with a cable than it is with a partner, but we're going to do a few reps where you just take it overhead. And that, just because the length of the lever now challenges him a lot more in that area. A couple more. Nice, nice. And I'll give you one more from this side. Um, same thing, but this time go into a, a split stance, into yeah, a lunge. Back foot forward? Yeah, whichever one you want to start with, yeah. And we'll just do straight out in front and back to start with. And then we'll go to the overhead version off the back of that as well. That's it. That's it. Take it right back behind your ears. And time. And you can even go, just stay where you are on that one, go, but, but put, your, put your feet, put your back foot in line with your front heel. So that's really then giving you something to work on nicely with it. Yeah, you've got to work on that there. Get that trunk nice and tight. Get that back hip through and tight. That'll do, mate. That's it. And all we're doing is messing around with the base of support. So rather than having a wide base here that you kind of nobody can move, narrow base and it's it's stiffness here that's required. Changes it a bit, doesn't it? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. You'll think about it a bit more. Some super simple stuff. Just you know, whack them into your programs and and get that trunk and core endurance in there. It's it's about the little things, though. So you were saying a while ago about the one percenters, yeah. and it's, it's not just taking care of the, the, the 80 percent. When you want to be the best and you want to improve your, your physique and get to the top, it's the one percent as well. When you take care of those, then things start Something to Something you're probably not necessarily going to see. You know, you're doing core and lower back work, unless your diet's really healthy and you can yeah. rip six pack. I'm yeah, like probably, myself. You yeah, mean. yeah, I'm probably not going to see my core ever you know so it's um, something you, you're not going to see but it does help I, I felt the benefits of doing it the lower back pain I think you just got to give it give it the time and the effort that it deserves really I agree I agree thanks for watching guys so this is really important stuff to put into your athletes programs your clients programs and even your own program it's a performance outcome but it's also a health and wellness outcome keep yourself healthy Thanks for watching, we'll be back very soon with some more quality content.